Hi, and welcome to Solar Talk, our Eco Green Energy podcast. My name is Alexandra, and I'm responsible for Eastern European region. And with me here today is. Hello, everybody. My name is Florent. I am uh, the sales responsible of the MENA and uh, Southern Asia market. So, Florent, welcome the, back to Shanghai. Uh, you had busy month. Ah, yeah, uh, lately we had like a uh, lot uh, to deal with uh, regarding exhibitions. Uh, we participated to uh, the Canton Fair in April, and then after I uh, went to the solar storage Cairo for a few days, and uh, ended up to Munich uh, to be present on our booth at um, uh, Intersolar. Yeah. So, what was the difference between exhibition in Cairo and Intersolar? Well. Um, the solar storage Cairo was uh, mainly focused on uh, the Egyptian market, while uh, Intersolar was uh, really like the big rendezvous for all the distributors, EPCs, and manufacturers for solar panels and uh, BSS from all around the world. So I would say actually in Intersolar you had the opportunity to meet uh, more people. Uh, actually, it, it is considered to be uh, the biggest, or at least one of the biggest uh, exhibition regarding solar uh, technology in the world. Mm. I see. And uh, do you think BSS is getting a new trend in the, our market and our industry right now? So this really depends actually. I think each market is different mm -hmm. and uh, in the same way each project is different. The thing is that you can have like so many uh, different configurations uh, when you associate uh, solar and storage. Uh, depending on what is needed, um, the configuration of course will change, the size also uh, will change. For example, in Western countries, uh, people are mostly looking for uh, on-grid installation and uh, what people talk about is peak shaving, uh, being independent, uh, uh, reducing cost. Uh, while in um, countries, from the, for example, in the MENA region, uh, where you often have an unstable grid, uh, what is looked the most would be uh, what is called mini-grid systems, mm -hmm. uh, like totally off-grid, uh, that can power villages uh, or uh, factories, uh, stuff like that. So um, even if the technology itself is the same, uh, the way that is, it is used is totally different uh, depending where you are and the configuration of the product. Yeah, so what we could see at InterSolar is that people are not only interested in the solar panels or just the batteries, but they are actually interested in the whole solution. So mostly in my market what can I see is that people are more interested in off-grid systems. Mm -hmm. So uh, mostly I got questions about off-grid systems. Uh, is it possible to do it? Because uh, in our Eastern European region most of the people are having houses in the mountains, where the, they cannot be connected to the grid and so on. So what we are trying to do right now with them is to develop the whole solution where they can got everything, uh, depends on their needs or uh, what is their goal with this system is to be completely independent. So is that something that's uh, currently happening in your market? Well, this is something I see a lot, uh, you know, recently I uh, studied a lot uh, uh, sub-Saharan uh, African countries mm -hmm. such as Nigeria, Kenya, uh, and there, yes, the demand, the demand is huge because the the, the need is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, citing Nigeria, uh, last year they had uh, nine or ten uh, national uh, grid shortcuts. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, uh, you have to remember that uh, if you are in on-grid configuration, your uh, uh, solar installation will stop. Uh, to, to produce electricity. That's why uh, being hybrid or off-grid uh, using batteries, especially in this kind of countries, it's very, very important uh, for businesses, for example, uh, factories, restaurants, who cannot allow uh, to have their service interrupted because uh, of uh, the lack of uh, electricity. Those kind of solutions are essential. Yeah, I can see that maybe for Africa is uh, not uh, something that's uh, not uncommon. Like for example, you know what happened in the Spain and Portugal in the April, the blackout. Maybe for Europe it was something new and uh, they maybe start getting idea that they need to do something about that, especially because the grid is under a lot of pressure right now. Uh, and also we have uh, now a lot of installations of the PV system. Uh, worldwide. 
So I think people are starting to get that there is a new era coming where they need to know a little bit better about the BSS and also get involved in this area. Do you think, uh, for example, from my, uh, from my perspective, what I'm talking with my clients is that uh, they heard about energy storage, but actually they're not quite familiar because they're getting a lot of information from the different manufacturers and also you can see that uh, we have uh, a lot of competitions right now in China. So uh, I would like to see uh, what do you think uh, where people can get uh, a real knowledge about energy storage and uh, do you think uh, that uh, right information are getting to our clients or general in the market? This is, this is a very good question actually. Uh, this is a, a challenge that uh, I daily face when I'm talking with clients regarding their projects. Um, the first thing I always ask uh, my clients when they come to me with an inquiry is like, how? How did you got uh, this number? How do you know uh, this is what you need? And most of the time, uh, my client will say, oh, because I received a quotation from another company. Mm -hmm. But actually, most of the time, no, no research has been made uh, behind. And uh, as I said just before, this always depends on what you want to do, what is your real need. For example, I received uh, often inquiries uh, for uh, off-grid uh, systems and people that uh, want to be totally independent. Uh, but then when I check the inquiry, uh, I directly see that uh, what they think uh, is needed uh, will never be enough for their consumption. So most of the time, I will not take the risk uh, to send uh, an offer to a client just because he wants a number. Uh, for that, uh, at Eco Green Energy, uh, we always make sure that uh, before we uh, give a quotation or something like that, we check uh, if they understood what is the real need of the client. Sometimes the client doesn't know what he really needs. And when it comes to uh, technical support, um, we have the, 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 the chance uh, to have internally a, a research and development team based in France uh, that will take care of uh, this kind of technical support, making the calculation, doing the sizing, uh, selecting the right components, uh, right equipment, the right use, uh, all based on the uh, uh, data that we would uh, got from the clients, such as uh, electrical daily consumption, uh, what uh, is the uh, uh, type of uh, bus uh, like the AC bus or DC bus that is available, uh, this kind of stuff that most of our clients actually uh, most of the time don't know because, uh, of course, if they are not experts in this uh, kind of fields, this is uh, our mission to support them. What I had, uh, for example, for my market, uh, my clients had uh, two or three scenarios that they wanted to integrate energy storage solution for, for their uh, PV system. So they didn't know which solution would be the best for them. They even didn't know what is the function actually going to be. Are they going to be more economical or is it going just uh, for their own self consumption mm -hmm. So we had a talk, we organized uh, two, three meetings with our engineer team in uh, France uh, to discuss this kind of things. And uh, what we see, there is a big need uh, first to determine what our clients want. Mm -hmm. So based on that, what we did is that uh, we developed a consultancy mm -hmm. uh, services where we are going to uh, lead our client from the start to the end. So first of all, we, are, we can do for them the case study about their project and also in that case study is going to be involved everything that they need from uh, their daily uh, consumptions, uh, their functions, what they want and so on. So everything is going to include, be included in this case study so they can have on the paper, okay, this is what we have now and this is what we want from this uh, system uh, to be in the future. So as you can see, we have right uh, timeline frame. How long is it going to take? So for example, the initiative phase where we are doing consulting and preparing the offer and everything it can take like uh, up to six weeks and then after that uh, we are getting uh, uh, in position where we are doing all where we are finding actually the our equipment that they need because at the end we don't uh, sell only a battery container you know we are selling the whole solutions 
uh, we have different uh, offers uh, for our uh, BSS solution, but actually it's really important for people to know that uh, for the bigger one, except to 11 kilowatt hour that we are currently having in our offer, it's really important that the bigger battery containers are actually only containers. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just sell the container and not be aware how PV system is working and what they want to accomplish in mm -hmm. the future. So actually I think it's really important to put the accent on that uh, in the beginning you need to have someone who is really uh, relevant in this industry and uh, as you know we are currently here for 18 years so actually I think we have a, a good position right now to become maybe one of the leader in the, this uh, industry related to energy storage. So based on that, uh, do you think that um, currently there is a huge need for energy storage but people are actually afraid because of the prices uh, to maybe invest in that because you know the return on investment can be maybe two, three, up to four years. So, so price, uh, especially in this industry and uh, in the current time, uh, is always uh, a thing that customers keep in mind. Uh, on the other side, price, I think, from my point of view, uh, should always uh, come after the quality. Mm -hmm. Especially in the uh, African market and Mena market, where um, which are markets that are very price sensitive and mm -hmm. the, 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 the price war is very, is very tough there. But uh, sometimes people they just won't, um, I would not say care because sometimes it's also that they don't know that much. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they, I think for some countries it's very complicated from their point of view, from where they are uh, to have access information about what is a uh, good installation, what mm -hmm. is a good equipment. And uh, for that, uh, fortunately, uh, mm -hmm. there are tools that exist, uh, there are like some common practices uh, that uh, I encourage people to check, uh, such as the uh, bill of material, uh, checking uh, who are the suppliers, what kind of uh, cells that is used, uh, either in um, the solar panel uh, or the, in the BSS. Uh, but when it comes to investment big like this, uh, I think price should always arrive after quality. People should not see that as uh, a cost. This is an investment for the future. As you say, if we have a return on investment after four years, uh, five years, or even ten, uh, because this solution is for 20, 30 years. Uh, so for some clients, uh, it's not just uh, uh, investment, it's also uh, because they don't have alternative. Uh, for example, I received a, um, an inquiry for a, some remote places in Congo, uh, in the middle of the forest. Uh, in that case, uh, they have to use generator powered by uh, oil, by gas. Uh, switching to solar uh, is uh, not just uh, decrease cost, but it can be like a total um, independent um, solution for them. Of course, it requires a short-term uh, expense that is, uh, is, uh, not, uh, not, is not small, but on the long term, if you compare to uh, a monthly cost of using gas and maintenance of the generator, uh, the uh, return on investment actually can be reached pretty fast. Mm. Yeah, so you think that price should be after everything, considering first quality and uh, what are you getting from your manufacturer or supplier? Of course, that is the, the, the service that goes with that. If there is anything that happens, if they have a question, they want uh, to have someone uh, that is here to answer their question, to um, take responsibilities. Uh, Otherwise, why would they choose a specific supplier? Yeah, so uh, definitely what is important in uh, this phrase is to understand that uh, even it is pricey, 
uh, but uh, you can see based on the five years period up to now, it's um, the price is going down like each year for 10 to 15 percent. So we will see how is it going to be next year. But uh, definitely something that people need to understand uh, now when we have a lot of information, especially after winter solar and everything, is uh, to find someone who is definitely going to be uh, for them there from the beginning mm -hmm. to the end of the development project and uh, installation, but also someone who is uh, this long in the industry that can uh, give them after sales support after it. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's really important. It doesn't matter are you going uh, maybe to work with us or with some other company. It's really important for you to be aware that uh, you need someone who is going to be with you from the beginning to the end. As someone who is a part of this industry, I think that's something that should be a good advice for them to always mm -hmm. uh, check with their manufacturer, to also check all technical specification and also to see what kind of service they're getting and uh, also at the end uh, what kind of after sales service they're going uh, to have. Well, Alexandra, I think uh, that's uh, enough information for today. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this uh, podcast uh, with me today. Uh, guys, let's keep in touch uh, and see you to the next edition. Yeah, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we will be here to lead you from the beginning of your project until the end. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.